Today is Sunday, December the 19th, 2010. I have one video on YouTube about this HP 334A distortion analyzer and quite a few questions have come up about it so I wanted to show you um, uh, some other interesting things about this particular one. It has some problems but uh, that actually might make it even more interesting to watch. First thing we're going to do for confidence is we're going to check out the equipment we're going to be comparing it with and driving it with. This is a uh, Tektronix SG505 oscillator. We don't use these two pieces in this one. This is the AA501 distortion analyzer and this is a, an RMS voltmeter. First thing we're going to do is to take the output of our oscillator. This is it. It's terminated into a 600 ohm load as you can see which is necessary. We're going to plug it in to our distortion analyzer first make sure that our equipment that we're dealing with here is doing reasonably well as a system our oscillator supposedly can be as good as 0008 percent at 100 kilohertz which is what I have now I've got it on 10 times 10,000 100 kilohertz is uh, 0006 percent so that's six parts per million in its best condition Tektronix says it's about eight parts per million or better. So in this case it's doing well. Uh, it doesn't always do that perfect but we're just doing a sanity check. I'm going to change this one to there to uh, times one case. So now we're at 10 kilohertz. Not a big glare there. 15 parts per million. Not bad. A little out of their brand new specs but something we can live with. Now let's get this one that microprocessor to thinking about what it's doing. There we go. Cheap connectors, huh? There we go. That's what cheap connectors will do for you. 13 parts per million. Oh, goodness. This, this video has been quite a challenge. And there we go. 14 parts per million. So now we're cooking. So our distortion is good. We're, we're, within, we're within a respectable range. The same thing for the voltage. We don't have to do this, but we will. We've got it set at 0 dB. 0 dB is uh, 1 milliwatt into 600 ohms. 1 milliwatt, if you multiply voltage, um, if you multiply power times resistance and take the square root of it, you'll end up taking the square root of 0 0.6, which is about 0 0.775. We got 0 0.784. If you do the math there, it's about 99%. So we're within about 1% of correct. That's at 100 hertz, kilohertz. 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz. So we're within specs here. So now we know uh, what that we can trust our equipment. The reason I'm doing this is because this uh, HP over here works quite well at low frequencies, but it has some problems above about four or five kilohertz. Let me plug it back into the amplifier so we'll have some reasonable levels of distortion that we can deal with. The amplifier we're driving is an old uh, Macintosh MC275 operates into a couple of dummy loads here that are getting sort of warm. We watch everything on an oscilloscope. Spectrum analyzer over here that we're not going to be using. There's our frequency 99. That was our 100 kilohertz, so we're not going to be operating anything up at 100 kilohertz, but let's go back down to uh, 1 kilohertz. There we go. And crank down the voltage there because we're overdriving our amplifier. So we're at a kilohertz there, 1006. There's our sine wave output, nice and clean. We won't run it too high here. We're using some driving our amplifier at maximum output. There's our voltage. Across the 8 ohm load, there's our distortion. It'll settle down here about 0 0.14. 8. Uh, 75 volts. If we put this on voltmeter and we put this on 10, 
we can see that our this is about eight eight point eight a little parallax not not much I don't want to get too focused there but so it's about right just a little bit less than 8.8 .8. up here we're measuring 8.75 so that seems to be okay at about 0.14 percent distortion now the way you use this distortion analyzer this 10 voltmeter position here and then we're on 10 volts on the 10 volt scale what you do is this red this red right here set level you go to set level you go here to set level 100 and then this is how you vary the voltage oops there we go sorry I was in the wrong position didn't want all the way there we back off of this and our meter isn't pegged and we set this keep fumbling with it here you set this to full scale so it won't go that way so we got to crank it at one more and then back it off some there we go we're gonna get there okay so we're at full scale so set level straight up set level straight up set level 100 vary this these two the vernier and the and the course until you get it full scale I've got it in manual I've got the RF detect to normal if I put it in RF detect it quits because I've never used the RF detect function so I don't really know what it's good for I've got the uh, high pass filter set to fundamental greater greater than one kilohertz we can turn it on or off so I flip it on and off see the meter jump a little bit it's in the voltmeter position for the moment we'll leave it on now we're going to go to um, and here's our frequency again thousands thousand Hertz <clears throat> we're going to go to distortion and times 1k now let's go times a hundred then we'll turn this one over to 10 and as we turn it to 10 we we'll see that it starts dropping off what we're doing this is a an analog machine purely analog it's absolutely beautiful inside but what we're doing is nulling the fundamental frequency we're nulling out the one kilohertz so that the only thing left to measure are its harmonics so we we turn this back and forth we tweak it back and forth until this gets as low as it'll go again I leave it in manual position to do this then we use these other two these balance controls the red ones to course the black ones to find and we do it again and we tweak this thing down to absolute as low as we can possibly get it and then we're going to put it in automatic and start running up let's leave it in manual for right now then we're going to start running up the uh, the gain here so now we're on the 30% scale, 10, 3, 3% scale. Okay. In manual. You can go to automatic and I think it'll uh, it'll kind of settle down, but I still want to show you what we're trying to do is to null this. And we're going to use this again very carefully. That's going to be very touchy. We want to run this. We want to null it again. Get it absolutely as low as we can. We'll go to the course. There we go. Get it. There we go. It's a little lower. Fine. Now we can go to automatic, and it'll it'll take out those those small errors that we've made. There we go. Now we're at the one percent scale. We're at the point three percent scale. On the point three percent scale, I think you can read this. It says it's about point one four. Because there's. 0.1, 0.2, 0.15, about 0.14, slightly less than, there it is, 0.14, it agrees, not bad for a kilohertz. Now, if I go to 10 kilohertz, actually this thing comes apart, let's go to 10 there, with 10 kilohertz, we've got to go back and start this whole process all over again, set level, that level and let it do its thing settle down 
put it on one again. Remember we're doing the set level 100 right here. So we set it right on 100. We'll put this back in manual. Won't make any difference right there. Now we'll go to 10. 1K times 10 is 10 kilohertz. So we're all pretty well set up. Now we're going to go to distortion. And it drop way down. You can run this up if you want to, just to get a better meter reading. Right there. Now these, these adjustments are going to be very touchy. We're going to touch this one up right here very carefully to get a better dip. Alright, that's about as low as we can get it. It gets really touchy. We'll do the uh, balance. Do the course first. As low as we can go. We can do the fine if we want to. Won't make a lot of difference. We've got as low as we can get it. That's it. Put it in auto. I don't know exactly how auto works, but it does seem to work. We go back down here again. Now we're on the 1% scale. Now we're on the 0.3% scale. The 0.3% scale says pretty much right on 0.25. There's our 0.3% distortion scale. There's our 0.3% scale, so it's 0.25. It's still actually only about 0.13. So, I've taken it apart, I've sprayed it, I've cleaned it, it's absolutely beautiful inside, it's a beautiful instrument, but uh, it has a problem and I don't know what its problem is, and it starts at about 4 kilohertz. Okay, now let's go to a really low frequency. This is my problem and it's just, that's the way it is. I don't know what to do about it, I don't know how to fix it. Just for the fun of it, let's, uh, whoops, try not to peg our meter too hard there. Let's turn it down. Let's go down to 20 hertz times 10 and let's go to uh, the two the two right there there's our 20 Hertz here's our oscilloscope let's back this thing way back something that bit me a little earlier and I'll show you our output still about 8 volts because we got an amplifier that'll do real wide frequency range we're at about 0.3 percent I think it works pretty good down here but let's start all over <clears throat> our voltmeter, whoops, 10 volts. I like to slam it around. You can see how it bounces around, but it does it does seem to get its brain back together. The correct voltage is about 0.82. There we go, 0.82. <clears throat> so the voltmeter's still working pretty darn good. This is down at 20 hertz. Let's do our set level. Put this back up here, our red meters. And we don't have enough drive there, but we do actually. And you know why? This one bit me pretty hard a while ago. This can't be up here fundamental greater than one kilohertz. You have to turn this off. When you turn this off, watch what happens. There we go. See, now we got lots of drive. So watch this little switch over here. Now we got plenty of drive. That's all the way. So we back that down, turn this up once. There we go. Now we can set it full scale. Put it on manual. The manual just helps us uh, null the, the fundamental a little easier. Because when you get an automatic, it, it's kind of fighting you. So I recommend starting off in manual. Only go into automatic when you have to. Okay, set, 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 100%. Distortion. Now, the reason that it hasn't moved yet is because we're still seeing the fundamental is still being passed through here big time. So we're going to have to go to times one. See, we're on 10. Now, if, I, if you can see them both at the same time, as I approach 20, it should drop dramatically. There it goes. See, it goes way down. Now we're going to start with this one again. And start dipping this thing. After we get it that low, we can actually run the, the gain up a little bit here. So that we can, it gets really touchy now. So you gotta, you gotta be careful. Whoops. So you play with this one down here for a little while, and you go back up here to the uh, balance. There we go. We want to get as low as we can. Back and forth a couple of times. There we go. Really low there. So we can raise this gain a little bit, and a little bit more. Now this one's probably about as close as we're going to get, so we can start touching up the fine. And if you're if you're really brave, you can touch this one, but it might go haywire on us. 
jump on all scale. That's the closer we're going to get. Now is where the automatic comes in nice and it seems to settle it down. Okay, on the point, now we're at point three. It says we got point two, yeah, about point two five. Somewhere it's kind of varying between point two five and point two seven. Not too bad. Something we can live with. This one says point two. It's jumping around a little bit too. Twenty hertz. Maybe we got another loose connector. But anyway, it's within range. It's working at twenty hertz. But don't forget that one. Once you go below a kilohertz. Yeah. See, we're kind of. I think we got some loose connectors up there. But in general, this is how it, th this beast works. It's actually quite a nice device. This one does seem to have a problem above about four kilohertz. No use in me getting into the tediousness of every every one. But the adjustments are always the same. Now I've noticed. Let's go back here just for fun. Let's crank this back down to. We're going to go back to the voltmeter. Let's put it on 10 volts. Let's put this back over to voltmeter so I don't slam my meter. If you put this in RF detect, nothing happens. I don't know. I don't know why you need RF detect. I guess in case you're detecting, trying to detect some RF that might be on it, maybe it would get a, a reading. I assume it would. But normal there, and, and again, I have always used it above a kilohertz, equal to or greater than a kilohertz is what I've thought about it as. It seems to work, but at 20 hertz, well, we're on voltmeter now. At 20 hertz, or below a kilohertz, you have to make sure this thing is off. So that's all the knobs on it. There's nothing else. The voltmeter is great. I think the voltmeter is off uh, at high frequencies on this one too, so there, it does have a problem. Like I say, up above about four or five kilohertz, it starts uh, its error starts becoming pretty significant. So this is another uh, test and demonstration of this little HP 334A torsion anal analyzer. Quite nice, but uh, it's, it's very laborious. Uh, and when you compare it to these things up here, you can change the voltage. You can do anything you want to, and it'll it'll just instantly adjust. It jumps around, bounces around a little bit. So if uh, if you can find and afford this, this is what you really want to have and it takes all the labor out of it and allows you to make many more measurements. Again, hope this is fun.